Welcome back, Deep Divers. Make sure you hit like and subscribe if you want more deep dives like this one. Tonight. Well, tonight we are diving into a mystery that has been lighting up the internet. Unidentified lights or orbs spotted over New Jersey. Could they be connected to the Hestalen lights in Norway? Or even to plasmoid research happening right here in the U.S.? We've got articles, YouTube videos, and even some scientific papers. Let's see if we can connect the dots and shed some light on these puzzling phenomena. I think what's really intriguing here is that we are dealing with not just one, but potentially three interconnected mysteries, each more baffling than the last. We'll need to carefully examine the evidence and consider a range of possibilities, from misidentified aircraft to, well, let's just say things could get a little out there. Okay, let's unpack this mystery one layer at a time. First up, the New Jersey sightings. Um, it all started with a wave of reports about strange lights in the sky, described as drones by some witnesses, Things got really interesting when these sightings started popping up near sensitive infrastructure, sparking concern among government officials and even fueling some pretty wild theories. Indeed, there was speculation ranging from advanced spy drones to extraterrestrial spacecraft. Some even suggested it could be a sign of election interference or, believe it or not, an Iranian mothership lurking off the coast. Of course, we need to approach such claims with a healthy dose of skepticism. Right. It's easy to let our imaginations run wild when we're dealing with the unknown. But before we jump to conclusions, let's examine the evidence more closely. What exactly did these witnesses see? And what are the most plausible explanations? Well, many describe the lights as bright orbs moving silently and erratically across the sky. Some reported seeing them hovering in place, changing direction abruptly, or even vanishing and reappearing in different locations. This unpredictable behavior has led some to rule out conventional aircraft or drones. However, we need to consider the possibility of misidentification, especially given the challenges of accurately perceiving objects in the night sky. So are you saying these UFOs could have been something as mundane as airplanes or helicopters? It's certainly possible. Think about the parallax effect. The apparent shift in an object's position when viewed from different angles if you're observing an aircraft at a distance especially at night, its lights might appear to move erratically simply because of your changing perspective. It's like holding your thumb out at arm's length and closing one eye, then the other. Your thumb appears to jump back and forth even though it's not actually moving. That's a great analogy. I can definitely see how that could lead to misinterpretations, especially in the dark. But what about those reports of the lights disappearing and reappearing? Can the parallax effect explain that? Not likely. That's where things start to get a bit more perplexing. We need to consider other possibilities. And that's where our second mystery comes into play, the Hestalen Lights. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Hestalen, Norway, hmm. the UFO hotspot that's been baffling scientists for decades. This place has been a magnet for unexplained light phenomena since the 1980s, long before drones were even a thing. Precisely. And while there's no definitive explanation for the Hestalen Lights, researchers have identified four distinct types based on their appearance and behavior. Four types of lights. This is where it gets really intriguing. Tell me more about these different categories. What makes them unique? Well, type one is the most fleeting, consisting of brief, bright flashes, usually white or blue. Imagine a super bright camera flash, but in the sky. These flashes are often so brief that they're difficult to capture on camera. Then there's type two, which is more in line with the classic orb description, a yellow ball of light that can vary in size, shape, speed, and duration. These orbs have been observed hovering in place, moving slowly or rapidly, and even illuminating the ground beneath them. Wow, it's like someone shining a spotlight from the sky. I can see why people would find that both fascinating and a little unnerving. Yeah. What about the other two types? Type three is a bit more complex, involving clusters of lights of different colors. These clusters sometimes appear to be attached to a larger, darker object, leading some to speculate about the possibility of structured craft. And then there's type four, the most elusive and perhaps the most intriguing of all. Daytime sightings of objects that resemble classic UFO descriptions. Okay, now we're talking daytime UFOs. That definitely takes things to a whole new level of weirdness. But with decades of research and observations, surely scientists have come up with some explanations for these Hestalen lights, right? You'd think so, wouldn't you? But despite extensive research, including the use of sophisticated instruments like radar, magnetometers, and spectrometers, the Hestalen lights remain largely unexplained. So we've got these mysterious lights that seem to defy conventional explanations and decades of research that has yielded more questions than answers. What's the current thinking among scientists? Are they any closer to solving this puzzle? 
One of the most intriguing findings is the apparent connection between the Hestalen lights and electromagnetic activity. Researchers have observed that these lights often appear in areas with high electromagnetic fields, and they've even detected fluctuations in the Earth's magnetic field during these events. So could these lights be some kind of natural phenomenon related to electromagnetism? It's certainly a possibility. And that brings us to our third mystery one that might hold the key to understanding both the Hestalen lights and the New Jersey sightings. Plasmoids. Plasmoids are self-contained structures of plasma that superheated electrically charged gas. Imagine a glowing cloud held together by its own magnetic field. So like a miniature star, I'm trying to picture it. Not exactly a star, but you're getting warmer. What's fascinating about plasmoids is that they can store and release tremendous amounts of energy, sometimes creating those bright flashes and even jets of charged particles. Okay, that's starting to sound familiar. Could plasmoids explain those bright erratic lights people have been seeing in both New Jersey and Estalen? It's a possibility worth exploring. And here's where things get really exciting. Plasmoids aren't just some theoretical concept. They're being studied right here in the U.S. Researchers at Princeton University are doing some groundbreaking work on plasmoids investigating their potential role in everything from solar flares to disruptions to satellites. So these plasmoids are a real phenomenon, not just science fiction. What are the researchers at Princeton finding? They've been able to create plasmoids in the lab, and they're learning a lot about their behavior. For example, they found that plasmoids are very sensitive to magnetic fields. They can be steered, shaped, and even accelerated using magnetic forces. This is particularly interesting when we consider the connection between the Hestalen lights and electromagnetic activity. That's a really intriguing connection. Mm -hmm. Are you suggesting that the Hestalen lights could be naturally occurring plasmoids, somehow influenced by the Earth's magnetic field? It's a hypothesis worth considering, and it raises an even more intriguing question. Could some of these plasmoids be intentionally created? Hold on intentionally created. Are you uh, talking about secret government experiments or something? Well, let's not jump to conclusions. <laughs> but it's true that some researchers believe plasmoids hold the key to unlocking clean, limitless energy. They point to the plasmoid's ability to store and release vast amounts of energy, suggesting that it could be harnessed as a revolutionary new power source. That would be incredible. But if someone was experimenting with plasmoid technology, wouldn't there be more evidence? You know, hmm. beyond a few strange lights in the sky. Not necessarily. Plasmoid research is a highly specialized field, and much of it is likely conducted in secrecy, especially if it has national security implications. So we're back to the realm of speculation. But it's certainly a thought-provoking idea. Could someone be creating these plasmoids on purpose, either for energy research or perhaps even for more? nefarious purposes. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Remember, we're still trying to determine if plasmoids even explain the lights observed in New Jersey and Hestalen. We need to carefully examine the evidence and consider all possibilities. You're right. But even if the lights aren't plasmoids, the potential of this technology is fascinating. Is there anything else we should know about plasmoids? There's a lot more to these enigmatic entities than meets the eye. In fact, one of the most mind-blowing aspects of plasmoid research is the theory that they might represent a fourth domain of life. Wait a minute. Life, as in living creatures made of plasma. Explain this. It's a radical concept, but hear me out. Researchers like Dr. Huster, oh, there are a lot. But one example is of a real plasmoid researcher who supports the fourth domain of life theory. He argues that plasmoids possess several characteristics of living organisms. They exhibit self-organization, they can grow and reproduce, they interact with their environment, and they even seem to exhibit a kind of intelligence or awareness. Okay, now my mind is officially blown. <laughs> so we could be talking about a completely new form of life, one that exists in a state of matter we barely understand. But if plasmoids are alive, where do they come from? Did they evolve here on Earth? Or could they be extraterrestrial in origin? Now you're asking the big questions. And while we don't have definitive answers, there are some tantalizing clues. For example, some researchers have pointed out that the conditions necessary for plasmoid formation are actually quite common in the universe. Plasma is the most abundant form of matter in the cosmos, and it's found in stars, nebulae, even interstellar space. So plasmoids could be floating around all over the universe. That's wild. But how would they get here to Earth? And why would they be hanging around places like New Jersey and Hestalen? Those are excellent questions and they lead us deeper into the mystery. Some researchers speculate that plasmoids might be attracted to Earth's magnetic field, which acts like a giant shield, deflecting harmful radiation from the sun. So Earth's magnetic field could be acting like a beacon, 
drawing these plasmoids in. But if they're intelligent, why would they just be hovering around flashing lights at us? Wouldn't they try to communicate? That's a question that has intrigued researchers for decades, and there are some who believe that plasmoids might already be communicating with us, just not in ways we easily recognize. Okay, now you've really piqued my curiosity. How could these plasma beings communicate with us? Through telepathy, crop circles, or are we talking close encounters here? Perhaps not quite as dramatic as a Hollywood movie. But there are some fascinating theories about how plasmoids might interact with our consciousness. Remember we talked about how plasmoids are highly sensitive to electromagnetic fields. And guess what? Our brains generate electromagnetic fields too. So you're saying that our thoughts, our emotions could somehow be interacting with these plasmoids. That's yeah. mind boggling. But is there any evidence to support this idea? There's no concrete proof. But there are some intriguing anecdotal accounts. For example, some people who have witnessed ball lightning which some believe is a type of plasmoid, report experiencing strange sensations, altered states of consciousness, even vivid hallucinations. That's pretty wild. <laughs> but it's hard to separate anecdotal evidence from, you know, yeah. imagination or wishful thinking. Absolutely. We need rigorous scientific studies to determine if there's a real connection between plasmoids and human consciousness. But even if we can't prove it yet, it's a fascinating concept to consider. Imagine the possibilities if we could tap into the intelligence of these plasma beings, we could unlock secrets of the universe, gain new perspectives on reality, maybe even learn about other civilizations out there in the cosmos. Wow, that's a truly mind-expanding thought. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We still need to figure out if plasmoids even explain the lights we've been seeing. And if they do, are we talking about natural phenomena, secret experiments, extraterrestrial visitors, or something even more extraordinary? Those are the questions that keep researchers up at night. And while we don't have all the answers, we're making progress. The study of plasmoids is a rapidly evolving field, and new discoveries are being made all the time. So we're on the edge of a scientific revolution. The more we learn about plasmoids, the more we realize how much we don't know. Exactly, and that's what makes this deep dive so exciting. We're exploring a realm of mystery and possibility, a realm where science and imagination collide. Okay, my head is spinning with all these incredible ideas. We've gone from unexplained lights to the possibility of a new form of life, to the potential for interstellar communication and even the fusion of science and spirituality. What's next? Where does this rabbit hole lead us now? Well, let's not forget about those New Jersey lights. Remember how we talked about the possibility of someone creating plasmoids on purpose? What if those sightings weren't just random events, but part of a larger experiment, perhaps even a demonstration of this technology? We need to consider the potential implications, both positive and negative. Okay, now we're getting into the realm of speculation again. But yeah. It's certainly a thought-provoking idea. What kind of implications are we talking about? On the positive side, imagine the possibilities if we could harness the power of plasmoids for good. We could create clean energy, develop new healing technologies, even revolutionize our understanding of consciousness and the nature of reality. That's an inspiring vision. But what about the potential for misuse? Could this technology be weaponized? Could it be used for surveillance or even mind control? Those are valid concerns. And it's important that we approach this technology with caution, wisdom, and a deep understanding of its potential consequences. You're right. We need to ensure that this powerful force, if it is indeed real and accessible, is used ethically and responsibly. But how do we do that when we're dealing with a phenomenon that's still largely unexplained and potentially very dangerous? That's the challenge, isn't it? We need to balance our curiosity with a healthy dose of skepticism, and we need to engage in open and honest dialogue about the potential risks and benefits of plasmoid technology. And perhaps most importantly, we need to remember that we're not just dealing with a scientific puzzle, but with a profound mystery that touches upon the very essence of what it means to be human. Okay, that's a lot to ponder. Yeah. I need a moment to process all of this. We've covered so much ground. From the science of plasmoids to the philosophy of consciousness, to the potential impact of this technology on our future. It's a lot to take in. But that's the nature of a deep dive. We're exploring the frontiers of knowledge venturing into realms that challenge our assumptions and expand our understanding of what's possible. And sometimes those explorations lead us to profound questions that have no easy answers, questions that require us to dig deeper, to think outside the box, to embrace the mystery and wonder of the universe. You're right. It's not just about finding answers, but about expanding our awareness, mm -hmm. challenging our assumptions, and embracing the mystery and wonder of the universe. Exactly.
And as we delve deeper into this mystery, we may find that the most profound discoveries are not about plasmoids themselves, but about our own capacity for wonder, our willingness to embrace the unknown, and our enduring quest to understand our place in the grand tapestry of the cosmos. Okay, I'm feeling a sense of awe and a bit of trepidation, but mostly I'm just incredibly curious to see where this exploration leads us next. Are we ready to dive into the final layer of this mystery? Absolutely. Let's take a closer look at those New Jersey lights and see if we can shed some light on their true nature. All right, let's refocus on those New Jersey lights. We've explored all these mind-blowing possibilities about plasmoids, but we need to ground ourselves back in the actual sightings. What makes these New Jersey lights unique compared to, say, the Hestdalen lights? That's a crucial question. One thing that stands out is the sheer number of reports. Remember, we had a wave of sightings from multiple witnesses, all describing similar phenomena, and some even capturing video footage. That's significant because it suggests we're not dealing with isolated incidents or misinterpretations. That's a good point. More witnesses mean more data points, which could help us rule out certain explanations. What else makes the New Jersey case unique? The location is intriguing as well. Remember how we discussed the connection between plasmoids and electromagnetic fields? Well, the New Jersey sightings were concentrated in an area with a history of industrial activity and known electromagnetic anomalies. So are you saying there's something about the electromagnetic environment in that area that might be attracting or even generating plasmoids? It's a possibility worth exploring. There have been reports of strange compass readings, electronic malfunctions, and even unusual animal behavior in that area. Some researchers speculate that these anomalies could be linked to underground geological formations, or perhaps even remnants of industrial activity that create unusual electromagnetic fields. Okay, that's pretty creepy. So we've got a lot of witnesses, a location with known electromagnetic weirdness, and those reports of the lights behaving erratically, disappearing and reappearing. Is there anything in the witness testimony that specifically points to plasmoids? There are some intriguing details in the reports. For example, some witnesses describe the lights as having a fluid or amorphous quality, which aligns with the nature of plasma. Others reported hearing a faint humming or buzzing sound, which could be associated with the electromagnetic fields generated by plasmoids. So the pieces are starting to fit together, but it's still a pretty speculative picture. What would it take to really confirm whether or not these lights were plasmoids? Ideally, we'd need more scientific data. If researchers could get access to the area and conduct measurements during one of these events, they might be able to detect the telltale signs of plasmoid activity, such as fluctuations in electromagnetic fields, changes in air ionization, or even the emission of specific frequencies of light. So we need some serious ghostbusters with electromagnetic detectors to get to the bottom of this. But what if these lights aren't natural phenomena, but intentionally created? That's where things get really interesting and potentially concerning. If someone is experimenting with plasmoid technology, especially in a populated area, it raises serious questions about safety, ethics, and transparency. Right. We've talked about the potential for plasmoids to disrupt electronics, even potentially harm living beings. Yep. If someone is creating these things without proper precautions or oversight, it could have serious consequences. Absolutely. And it highlights the need for public awareness, open dialogue, and responsible research when it comes to plasmoid technology. We need to ensure that this powerful force, if it is indeed real and accessible, is used for good, not for harm. Okay, so we've explored a lot of ground tonight. Mm -hmm. From the science of plasmoids to the mysteries of the New Jersey lights, what's the bottom line for our listeners? What should they be thinking about after this deep dive? I think the key takeaway is that we're dealing with a phenomenon that is both fascinating and potentially transformative. Plasmoids, if they are indeed real and as powerful as some believe, could revolutionize our world in countless ways. From clean energy to advanced healing technologies to even a deeper understanding of consciousness itself. That's a lot to wrap our heads around. But what about those New Jersey lights? Do you think we'll ever know for sure what they were? That's the beauty of scientific exploration. The journey is just as important as the destination. We may never have definitive proof, but the process of investigating, questioning, and piecing together the evidence is what expands our knowledge and deepens our understanding of the universe. Well said. And I think that's a perfect note to end on. So deep divers, keep those minds open, stay curious, and never stop questioning the world around you. Who knows what other mysteries are waiting to be uncovered? Until next time, keep exploring.